So, so now we've looked at uh, what it what what it can mean on a convening level uh, on on Europe. Um, I think we're we're a little bit stretched for time, so we might not have. Uh, no, sorry. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome Ian Gulland to, uh, to the stage to uh, share us a little bit about um, uh, Scotland. Uh, okay. Want to go? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Casper. Uh, and thank you, Barcelona, for the opportunity uh, to come and present to you today uh, about what's happening in Scotland. It's really an honour uh, to be here presenting at this uh, fantastic event. I was. I guess I was thinking about what my pitch would be uh, coming today. Uh, I was kind of hesitant about showing lots of pictures about our sort of uh, beautiful hills and mountains and glens and rivers and all those sort of things that are very iconic to our national brand and very important to our, our food and drink industry, particularly whiskey and fish. And how that kind of resonates, I guess, with this idea of the circle economy about managing those natural capital assets, uh, like stocks and flows of of, of resources, I guess, that we really need to protect. So that really resonates with us in terms of the circular economy, in terms of the bioeconomy. Uh, I also thought about pitching the idea that, you know, for years Scotland has, to some extent, punched above its weight in terms of uh, contributions around inventions and uh, various things like the television, the telephone, the steam engine and all that sort of things. And seeing that the idea of the circular economy is a real opportunity for a new enlightenment uh, about bringing ourselves back to the fore uh, and how that chimes with our industrial heritage. I also just thought about pitching it the fact that we're kind of famous for our thriftiness and we all really do like to make things last longer. So again, the circular economy very much chimes with that. But actually I was out last night, when I arrived late, I went with a few friends to a bar in uh, downtown Barcelona uh, called Lulu. I don't know if people have been there. And it kind of reminded me of a famous Scottish singer small in statue, stature, but with a loud voice, who sang a very famous song in the 60s called Shout. So if you bear with me, I am going to shout. OK, possibly not raise my voice, but I am going to shout about what we're doing in Scotland, because I think that's important uh, for us in Scotland, but hopefully it's important for you. And I'll refer back to the shouting later on. Just before I talk about what we're actually doing in Scotland, I think it was useful just to sort of pitch the journey that we're on, uh, where we've come from, a bit about Zero Waste Scotland. It's an organisation that's uh, set up in 2010 by the Scottish Government where it set out its visions for a zero waste society. Uh, it established us, we're about uh, 110 people, 25 million euro turnover, uh, very much focused on driving up recycling rates in Scotland, working with municipalities, the private sector and the third sector. We've invested uh, in food waste collections all across Scotland. 75% of households now have access to a separate food waste collection. We've developed infrastructure for anaerobic digestion. We run a resource efficiency service for all businesses, looking at their energy, water and waste. Uh, that's identified uh, about 180 million euros worth of savings uh, in the first two years alone. We also have a brief looking at litter uh, and, well, certainly uh, adopting strategies to tackle litter and fly tipping, which I know there's uh, more coming to the fore now when we think about the circular economy. And I know there's presentations to borrow about the new plastic economy, We're very much looking at things like marine, tackling marine litter. So, I'm going to, so we've been around and we've been developing, and very much our journey uh, since 2010, as we call it, was developing this idea of a resource grid, trying to tackle uh, this idea of what we can do with all those resources that we have in Scotland that are currently in the waste stream, how can we pull them out and actually drive, our, uh, drive them back into our economy, uh, much like we do with energy, uh, creating our own energy, uh, renewable energy, and looking at our water systems as well. That was our kind of vision. Uh, and we've been very much still at the heart of what we do in terms of the recycling message uh, and improving and working towards targets. But about Four years ago, uh, I shared a platform with Ellen MacArthur, uh, who to some extent challenged me uh, around some of the things that we were doing. Not so much we were doing them wrong, but perhaps the context, we were missing the opportunity uh, and certainly missing the, the, the ambition uh, to go further than we're already going. Yes, we've got targets for high recycling. Yes, we've got uh, re restrictions coming on landfill, uh, a whole host of other measures that you would have, you anticipate in terms of waste regulation. But where are we missing the opportunity to look at real uh, business opportunity? 
And we did start to analyse those, those things that Ellen had been talking about. And I think everybody realises the, the, the opportunities around higher value up the waste hierarchy in terms of reuse. Uh, yes, we're losing value in Scotland. We export over 75% of the material we collect for recycling. So other than organics and glass, all the materials that we are collecting, and we're getting very, very good at those collection uh, methodologies, both at household level and businesses, we're exporting. For every one job in the collection infrastructure, there's eight jobs further up the supply chain, chain in terms of the reprocessing, resupply and, uh, of those materials back into the economy. To all intents and purposes, we were re exporting jobs. And the, and the recycling and the waste prevention activity we're doing was still very much at the back door of business. It was still something that wasn't hitting the boardroom level, and that was a key uh, aspect of what Ellen MacArthur Foundation was really talking about. So we joined the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, where we were the first nation, uh, not a region, the first nation to join the Ellen MacArthur uh, CE100. Uh, and we've been there participating in that and a number of other networks to learn and to share and to collaborate with not just with other nations and regions uh, in Europe, uh, but companies as well. So we drilled down into some of the things that have been talked about uh, at the macro level in terms of Europe to see what those opportunities were for us in Scotland. So we looked at our key industries, the food and drink industry, the textile industry, the oil and gas industry, and we identified massive opportunities in terms of numbers. So even for the food and drink, we just looked at whiskey, beer and fishing, which are three natural things for us to look at. Uh, there's an opportunity cost of about 600 to 800 million euros a year if we adopt more circular practices rather than just think of them as linear. Uh, manufacturing, we identified about 550 million euros worth of uh, benefit if we started to think differently about our manufacturing processes and actually introduced remanufacturing into some of those businesses. Not only that, we identified over 5,000 jobs in manufacturing if we started to shift towards a more circular economy. Oil and gas, there's a massive decommissioning opportunity coming off the North Sea in terms of uh, platforms and subsea infrastructure. All of that will be recycled. Well, the majority of that will be recycled, but it will be cut up on our uh, key sides and shipped off to other economies. Huge opportunity for us to look at not just reprocessing of those materials, but reusing and repurposing some of that equipment uh, here in Scotland. All of that really made not just myself and others and my team set up, but the politicians and the government. And they were really striving to see uh, how we could actually make some of that happen. We shouldn't forget the carbon numbers. They were really important as well. We identified an 11 million uh, tons of C equivalent CO2 saving by shifting to a circular economy uh, with all the actions that uh, we'd identified. That's just over 20% of our current emissions. It's quite significant when you start to think about you know, the global impact, uh, not just of Scotland moving to a circular economy, but all our nations and regions shifting towards that. So it was very keen. So the Scottish Government uh, decided to develop a strategy. And why not? We'll call it making things last. Uh, the kilt is a symbol of the circular economy because most men uh, don't own one. They hire one uh, when they want to go out and parade or dance. Uh, and if you do own one, it's made of very durable and long-lasting material uh, and it'll last your lifetime. So it's very important the government went out in a conversation, it talked to business leaders, it engaged with business leaders, and there was a huge appetite for this idea of a circular economy at boardroom level. People started to see opportunities. People started to see business opportunities and job benefits. Uh, even, uh, my nose. even some of the companies we've been talking about were frustrated uh, by the lack of durability in some of the products uh, that they were using and wanted to start thinking more differently about the performance economy. Uh, we, employ, we encourage young people to get involved in the debate as well as consumers around this idea of the circular economy. And the circular economy strategy was launched uh, earlier this year and I would encourage you all, if you haven't read it already, to download that uh, from the government website which sets out not just their ambition but some of the key actions uh, that they're keen for us to take forward. Uh, so that's where we come in, uh, and I guess what we're actually doing at the moment. So we've been doing some of this for some time. Uh, we've very luckily secured further funding from uh, Europe's structural funds to develop a circular economy program to accelerate the circular economy. So we have a number of other uh, initiatives being funded by that. But one of the key things is a, an investment fund, uh, 80 million pounds or 80 million, pound, 80 million euros probably, uh, equivalent over the next three years to invest in companies 
uh, on the ground to develop more circular economy practices. We have a dedicated one-to-one -one support service for businesses who are interested in taking that shift forward. So this is focused on SMEs, which are 99% uh, of what we have in Scotland. So we work directly with companies, uh, some of which are already making that shift. Uh, we've all heard of Philips, who have got a leasing the light model. Uh, we've got a small SME in Scotland called Juice, which is doing the same. It has a model where it uh, aims to lease light uh, and light fittings to companies in Scotland. We have a number of other companies looking at uh, byproducts of like the whiskey industry, turning into that, turning that into high value fuel and other protein substitutes. So it's really, really caught fire in terms of working directly with those businesses. We've got the CE100 run by El MacArthur. We've got a similar, a similar network in Scotland of like-minded businesses now, small, medium enterprises coming together, to wanting to share and collaborate uh, on a number of projects uh, in Scotland and take this forward. We, uh, have in, we've funded the Scottish Institute for Remanufacturing uh, with the Scottish Funding Council just a couple of years ago. It's the fourth such institute in the world, only the fourth such institute, looking at an interface between academic world and businesses in the manufacturing, manufacturing industry to look at how we can improve remanufacturing opportunities in Scotland. And there's a number of over 20 projects there, working with about 60 companies engaged uh, in remanufacturing in Scotland. Reuse and repair infrastructure, we've worked uh, a lot with the third sector in particular uh, to develop what's already available uh, across Scotland, a number of organisations providing reuse and repair facilities. Uh, what we've worked with them and through a programme called the Revolve programme to bring a degree of uh, accreditation to them, uh, raise their profile, uh, work with them locally to promote what they're doing. So they have now an accessible uh, framework across Scotland so people, consumers as well as businesses uh, can reuse or send stuff for reuse and also access reusable goods. Uh, we've also invested in repair skills and you know there's a number of those organisations which now actually promote themselves as repair cafes, uh, providing a uh, resource for people to bring stuff to repair but also to learn those skills. So skills are being now uh, exchanged and new, new people are now learning those new skills. We're also working closely with the skills development uh, professionals in Scotland, uh, not just at national level, but at local level, about the idea of a skills academy. How can we invest in the skills that we're going to need, not just today, but more importantly, when this whole circular economy really takes off uh, in 10, 15 years' time, what are the skills that we're going to need? Uh, so it's a bit like that backcasting exercise that a previous speaker was talking about. What are the skills we're going to need uh, looking forward, and how can we introduce those skills both at uh, secondary education, but also in tertiary education, working with universities. So one of the last things I'll just touch upon is this idea of the city and regional schemes. So key part of our work, uh, and again, coming from a conversation uh, with a guy called Guido Bram from uh, Amsterdam, uh, was talking about how do they work in the region. So we went to Amsterdam and we saw what they were doing there. Uh, and traditionally for Zero Waste Scotland, we tended to work in sectors. We worked with the food and drink sector, we worked with the manufacturing sector. Uh, but he sort of suggested, why didn't we try a regional approach? Because that seemed to be getting some success uh, in Amsterdam. So working with a chamber of commerce in Glasgow, business leaders in Glasgow, we decided to set up a project to look at uh, what could be done in Glasgow at a city level uh, and a regional level. Uh, so what came out of that was twofold. One, it was about working with business leaders in the city to take forward the idea of a circular economy, to talk about it, to understand what, what was possible. Uh, but more practically, we did what we called a city scan, which was really about drilling down into to understand the flows of materials actually in the city. It's a very practical look uh, at some of the obvious examples of where different materials could be aggregated differently or brought together differently uh, to allow new business opportunities. Well, that's just a very, very visual uh, sense of what the type of project looked like. Uh, and again, there's a report on our website uh, we worked in partnership with Circular Economy in Amsterdam to bring this to fruition. What it really did was engage in, with business leaders about the opportunities uh, and new businesses, uh, to set up new businesses uh, to make use of those materials which were, to, some extent, to all intents and purposes, going uh, out as waste, either to landfill or energy from waste. So there's a number of them that are now being taken forward, uh, hopefully going to be taken forward uh, in uh, sort of a phase three 
working with uh, Glasgow City Council. In fact, one of them, as you can imagine, you know, we were very keen to, to take forward uh, before uh, the others was the idea of making beer from bread, which I know is happening in other places, uh, but this is uh, particular working with Scottish bread rolls uh, and turning them into a local brew. And that's something that I think we'll, be, we'll probably see being rolled out across uh, Glasgow uh, with a bit more intensity. So that programme is now, we're now looking for other cities. We're going to be working with Aberdeen. We're going to be working with Edinburgh. We're actually going to be looking, hopefully, to work with an island community as well to, to push that uh, boundary a little bit further. Just to, to, to kind of uh, sum up, uh, one of the things that we're still uh, sort of heading off a question that I might get is about one, one of our challenges, and it is around procurement. I still think procurement is the sleeping beauty of the circular economy. I've heard that said by a commissioner in the, in the EU Commission, actually. Uh, it's not my line, uh, but it definitely is. It's the opportunity that I think we're all sort of struggling with slightly. How can we shift both public procurement and procurement from big businesses. A lot of big businesses are looking at the circular economy, but how could they influence their own procurement? Uh, one of the interesting projects we're working with is a large, uh, sort of, uh, what's we call it? Uh, care, uh, ho housing and care uh, company, looking, with, looking at them, they're very switched on to this, and they're looking at working with their suppliers on the ground, small SMEs, about how they can actually start to procure performance rather than products from their supply chain. So again, it's not just public procurement that we can see as an opportunity, it's working with big business as well. Uh, and I do think that's a huge opportunity for us. Anyway, just, just to finish uh, on the shout thing, I think it is, it's not just about Scotland shouting about it. I think we all should shout about uh, the circular economy, but circular economy. But more importantly, I think we should shout about collaboration. That should be the word we really, really shout about. Because I think you've heard from previous speakers as well, the importance of that. That's what really makes this happen. Uh, it's the fact that people will come together and collaborate and people see the obvious uh, benefit from doing that, both within their supply chains and without. We couldn't get to where we've got today without collaborating with Amsterdam, with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. We're now collaborated, collaborating in Scotland with our enterprise agencies, our environment agencies, our academic institutions, our skills development people. We're all now collaborat collaborating like we've never collaborated before. And now we're seeing businesses on the ground through the work we've done in Glasgow, and we've now seen the work we're doing in Aberdeen uh, and other places, how businesses are coming together in this. So that's the thing I want to leave with you uh, in terms of shouting. Shout about the circle economy, but shout about collaboration. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ian. Um, I know that uh, in, from, a, from a European perspective, you guys have done quite a, quite a bit. Maybe just one, could you... Is there one example that you can give since the implementation of the strategy that you say, that's what we're really proud of, that has been showing some of the opportunities already? I think, I think the Institute of Remanufacturing is uh, just a real success. I think uh, for us, certainly at Zero Waste Scotland, it was a new, we, we, to, to be honest, we didn't really have a relationship with an academic institution. Uh, so this, the institute is embedded in Strathclyde University in Glasgow and a number of other universities uh, involved in it as well. And bringing, sort of going to them with and working with them, they had the vision, they could see how this was working and they brought the, the companies in. And for us, you know, we can sit where we, you know, at the sort of national level and have these ideas, but these people got that together, they brought the businesses together, they created the interface and they're now successfully working uh, directly with that number of businesses and bringing projects and moving that forward. I think if you see that, it's easy to talk about it, but that's, that's it starting to happen now. All right, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Ian Gardent, Zero Waste Scotland. Um, so